This video is released on three anniversaries. On the 8th of September, I'm celebrating three years of my YouTube channel. But we also have release of Home Assistant 2022.9, plus anniversaries of Home Assistant, that's nine years, and Nabucasa, that's four years. In today's video, I will unfortunately not go into all of the details, as some of the things that have been added in this release require their own full featured videos, such as for example Automations Editor. Instead, we will be looking at three functionalities that have been introduced or improved in this release of Home Assistant and see how you can quickly enable them in your own system. So let's look at what's new in 2022.9. This release of Home Assistant, like the releases last couple of months, brings a lot of new things. One of the great things is the new Automations Editor. But I will not be covering this topic in this video, nor will we be talking about how you can backup and restore your ZigBee configuration to new ZigBee device, or move your old or current ZigBee to MQTT configuration to the internal ZHA configuration and new stick. Instead, we will be talking about something that started in a previous release, 2022.8, which is Bluetooth. While I was one of the skeptics who has avoided using Bluetooth for a long, long, long time, I think that the new improvements and the way the Home Assistant devs are pushing Bluetooth is something that you really should consider if you haven't used Bluetooth before. The previous release or August release of Home Assistant allowed us to just buy a USB stick, stick it in our PC, NUC or whatever we are using to host our Home Assistant, add it in the Home Assistant integrations page and voila, you would have Bluetooth devices. Of course, not all Bluetooth devices are supported, but the list is still growing slowly. The problem for me and also some of you is that A, I do not have enough USB ports, which can be mitigated by buying the USB hub and B, for some of you, that maybe your home assistant is located somewhere far, far, far away and that it doesn't have enough of a coverage to cover all of the Bluetooth devices. So first of all, let's check what my virtual machine looks and what kind of devices are hooked to it. Action Edit, Others, and you can see that I only have one device and this device here is my Zigbee router. So imagine the case. You have your home assistant on either Intel NUC, Raspberry Pi or whatever that is sitting somewhere far, far away. For example, in the basement of your house. And devices you need to monitor or get access to are located on the first, second or third floor of your house. How you can do that? Actually, now you can do it internally from within home assistant by using Bluetooth proxy. Yeah, Bluetooth proxy that is actually a ESP Home Bluetooth proxy, it has been added in the new release of Home Assistant and it has two parts. First part is of course Home Assistant that has to be able to receive the packages from ESP Home and the second component is ESP Home that now has this Bluetooth proxy functionality. There are two ways on how to add Bluetooth proxy. First, let's cover if you already have ESP Home installed. And by the way, for the Bluetooth proxy, you do not have to have ESP Home add-on installed. But we will look at that option a little bit later down the road. If you already have ESP Home and have any ESP32 devices that are up and running, just go to Edit and add one line of code. And that's it. This ESP32 device I have on my network is already collecting Bluetooth data from other devices by using the active scanning. And while we are on that subject, current Bluetooth proxy only supports passive BLE connections. That means that it just waits for a Bluetooth device to send data, such as for example current temperature state or the state of the contact sensor. The future version of the Bluetooth proxy, which should I hope come in the next version of the ESP Home, and that may not be this month, will have support for active connections. Active connections means that you can not just listen in to the data coming from the Bluetooth device, but also you can instruct Bluetooth devices to do something. Because of this, 
current implementation of the Bluetooth proxy doesn't support all the devices that are already supported by the internal Bluetooth integration. But I really think that you should already install it and use it if you already have Bluetooth devices because it can extend the network range of your current setup. After you have added this line Bluetooth proxy, click on save, press install. I will be using wireless or over the air update and compile the firmware. And my updated ESP32 device is already up and running. Let's press stop here. Since this was existing ESP32 device that I just added Bluetooth proxy to, I do not have to add it once again to Home Assistant. If we go to notifications, we can see that new devices have been discovered. Check it out. And we already can see two new Bluetooth devices. Remember, this is my production environment where I do not have any local USB device hooked up directly to my virtual machine. And the list of devices will slowly update and add more devices. But once again, don't forget that this version of Bluetooth proxy only supports passive scanning. But what if, for example, you are not using and do not plan to ever use ESP Home add-on? Even if you do not want to install ESP Home add-on in Home Assistant, the great guys from ESP Home and Home Assistant have created one web page where you can take advantage of the Bluetooth proxy without ever installing ESP Home add-on. For this, you will have to have one of the currently three supported devices. This is a plain generic ESP32 board that you are probably already using for some other projects. If not, there is a link in the description of the video, but there is also affiliate link here in the web page. The other option is to use M5 stack Atom Light, and this is the device that we will be using in today's video. I really do like this device because it's even smaller than the small ESP32 boards, and it can be hidden anywhere in your apartment. And this is something that I will be using to extend Bluetooth coverage in my home. The third device is great if you already have a lot of free Ethernet assets in your home. If you have PoE or Power Over Ethernet switch and you have free ports, you can use or you can buy this device, hook it up to your Ethernet, provide power via the Ethernet port and also hide this device somewhere in your apartment or house. But as I mentioned, we will be using this M5 stack device. The only thing that you need to do is hook up this device to your PC via the USB-C cable. Click on connect, select the port. And by the way, if you do not see port listed here, maybe you need to install drivers for whatever operating system you are using and click connect. You have a couple of options. If this is a brand new device, just press install M5 stack Atom Light. Install. This process takes around two minutes and it compiles and installs firmware on this device. If you don't see a list with SSIDs that are available, type in your SSID and of course password. Click connect. You now have option to add this to Home Assistant. If you press on add to Home Assistant, it will open my Home Assistant link where you just have to press on open link and open new Home Assistant window. By the way, check that this URL is working. Click on open link and it will ask you if you want to set up ESP Home. I will click cancel. Why? Because I first want to show you something. If we go to settings, add-ons, you can see that ESP Home is not installed on this machine. I wanted to show you just so that you know that you do not have to have ESP Home add-on installed. Of course, if you still haven't tried ESP Home add-on, I really do recommend that you do try so. If you've skipped the last step and didn't press Add to Home Assistant, you can also go to your Home Assistant integrations page and by the way, you should see notification here that new device was discovered. And you can click configure here. Submit. And it has added this Bluetooth proxy ESP Home device to your Home Assistant. Since this is the second machine where I'm running Home Assistant, I have already here installed Bluetooth device. 
So this device will not be able to detect new devices. Since most of those devices have already been installed in the Home Assistant. Let's go back to my main setup. Some time has passed and it has also found 5 devices. 4 switchboard devices and 1 mosquito repellent, because on the other mosquito repellent batteries have died. But it has also discovered this device. What does that mean? If you live in a large house, a really large house, you can have multiple ESP32 boards running as a Bluetooth proxies. And that way you can extend your Bluetooth coverage all around your house, garden, garage or whatever you want to extend it to. Let's press on configure, submit. And now I have two devices in my instance of Home Assistant running on Synology where I, as a matter of fact, don't have a single Bluetooth dongle connected to it. And last update in regard to Bluetooth. If you yourself are playing with the firmers or doing a DIY devices that use Bluetooth as a connectivity, there is now something called BT Home. This is an open standard for broadcasting sensor data over the Bluetooth LE or BLE or Bluetooth Low Energy. Yeah, another new standard, but <laughs> this one is great. Let's look at how Home Assistant works. Each device that you want to add to Home Assistant has to have its own integration. The problem is, the more devices you have, the more integrations you have to create in Home Assistant. And I'm not talking about the more integrations for two of the same devices, but two from the different manufacturers. This open standard wants to bridge this gap. It means that any device that is using this BT Home open standard will be automatically added to Home Assistant. It already knows how to interpret the data coming via the BLE and it knows if this is a temperature, humidity, motion or whatever sensor data you need to add to Home Assistant. Currently, ATC Mi thermometer, which is a custom firmware for the very famous Bluetooth thermometers, works with the BT Home, and also B Parasite, which is a DIY version of the plant sensor. A new standard, but this one is really trying to overcome the differences between the protocols, data formats, etc. between various manufacturers. But as I said, there are a lot of other changes. Let's look at one simple change that can help you troubleshoot your system. If you go to your current or pre-2022.9 release of Home Assistant, you have information about the core and supervisor. It says that my processor is using 1.9% and the memory usage is at 26.3%. Supervisor is using 0.1% and 5.1% of memory usage. But what does it actually mean? The problem is that this data about the memory and processor use is for that particular container and it doesn't show the overall system usage. This has been fixed or improved in this release of Home Assistant. If you're lucky enough to have Home Assistant Yellow, click on Hardware, you will see information about your Home Assistant Yellow, but also you will see the processor usage and this is the total processing power that's been consumed by the overall Home Assistant on this hardware platform. For me, it is around 40-50%. And we also have information about the memory, and this is the real-time information. I consume 50% or 1 GB of 2 GB available. There will now be no more confusion with this data. This is direct use of whole of the Home Assistant. But it doesn't work only with the Home Assistant Yellow. Let's jump to my virtual machine. If I click on Hardware, it takes some time for data to load up because this is a real-time data. We can see that my current processor use is 27% or 17 now. And I'm using 1.2 GB out of 5 gigs of RAM available. There is current bug in the Beta 5 version of 2022.9 where I don't see information about hardware. But this will be fixed and here you will be able to see if you're using generic machine, virtual machine, home assistant yellow or whatever system you are at the end using. 
and this here is a total usage of my Home Assistant instance on this Synology machine. It looks like maybe 5 gigs of RAM is too much. Maybe I can lower this to 3 gigs or something like that. Remember, this is real-time data and there are no sensors or entities currently available for this inside Home Assistant. What you see here is real-time and you cannot get that information, at least for now, inside Home Assistant. You can still use older sensors that you, for example, may already have in your system to track whatever host information you are tracking, such as the CPU, RAM, temperature, etc. But this information is system information and is not available as a separate entity. But was the third thing that I wanted to talk about, since it's not automations and it's not on how you can migrate your Zigbee stick. Actually, it's a helper. And I myself really don't use that much helper, so if I'm talking about helper, it should be something very important. If we go to settings, integrations, helpers, you now have ability to create one new helper. Create helper, schedule, and you can create complex schedules. For example, I may end up using this as a schedule for my kids' activities. I know that they go from Monday to Friday to school from 8 p.m. till 1 p.m. So for each day, I can create schedule that's different in length or multiple schedules for the same day. Let's call this one school, select icon and create. Home Assistant finally has very simple but very efficient scheduler. And how does it work? It's really input helper like a bullion, but it has a schedule. For each of those highlighted days or time slots, the sensor will be in the state on. If there is nothing in the schedule, the sensor will be in the state off. Let's check it out here. Developer tools states Schedule school is currently in the off state, but besides showing you current state, which is off, you have also option to see when will be the next event, which you can also use inside your automations. I really think that this is a very powerful tool. It is not same as reoccurring events, because reoccurring events are a bit more complex, but this can help you with a lot of automations, especially if you have things that repeat each week on the same date and same time. As always, don't forget to check all of the release notes, especially noteworthy changes, because a lot of things can be hidden here, new integrations, but especially breaking changes. I must admit that this release and the previous release of Home Assistant have really changed me. I was previously a person that was altogether avoiding any Bluetooth device, if I could, in my home assistant. With this integration, with last month's addition or changes to Bluetooth, and this month's changes and ability to use ESP Home as a Bluetooth proxy, which allows me to expand my Bluetooth coverage in my home, I really have changed my mind, and I will be looking for more Bluetooth devices to add to my home assistant. Yeah, I know, I completely skipped automations in this video, but that's because the automations themselves require dedicated video. I must thank all my YouTube channel members for supporting me. Some of you have been supporting me for more than two years, which is really a lot for a channel that's only three years old. And these are the names of all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. And quick note to all of them. Don't forget that there will be a special giveaway just for you. Watch out for members only video. But thanks also to all of you that have liked, watched or subscribed to my channel. There will be also one giveaway for you too. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates and of course the streams. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really means a lot. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.